Welcome to Spain 1812. The British are pursuing the French as they have conquered the keys of Spain and are moving up this road and this road here, pushing the French forces back. However, they have come across a Spanish village which is defended by the French. This is going to be a mission that the British are going to be attacking. The French will be defending. Let's check the armies. So here is the French army that's going to be holding the fort. I've got two battalions of uh, two, sorry, two brigades, each of two battalions of infantry supported by a battery of guns. So I've got a lot of Napoleon's beautiful daughters with them today. And they're also going to have a dragoon brigade in reserve. Now there's three regiments of dragoons there. How will they fare against two regiments of British cavalry? Not very well, is my thought. So let's see how it goes. Now, they, I'm going to just say here, all the British commanders are going to be strategy rating 8, the French are going to be 7, and the reason for that is because the British are attacking, so they need to have a slightly higher strategy rating in order to let the game progress. If we just kept them 7 as well, then there will be a danger that not much happened, which wouldn't be very interesting for you guys, and it wouldn't be interesting for me either. So that's the French army. I'm going to go for a quick flyby over the table. In fact, no, I will deploy, and then I'll do a flyover of the table after we've deployed. So here we are with the deployments. The British in column of march on the road. They're going to be winding their way through to the ford. We've got two new commanders with us today. Colonel Niall and Colonel Don. Say hello. Hello. There we go. Uh, they're brand new to Black Powder and we're, uh, we're blooding them with this uh, conflict. Now in a change, a shocking change to the usual order, General Dan is playing the French today. And I am playing the British, which also, which almost certainly means that I think this might actually be the first French victory we've ever seen on the channel, maybe? I don't know. But uh, I normally play French. But uh, <laughs> let's see how it goes. So the British, they are going to be starting first. They're going to be marching forth. And let's see how uh, Colonel Nile rolls his dice. Remember, the British are going to be strategy eight. The French are strategy seven. Now, I'm just going to do cut-ins for the most of this game. Uh, I'm not going to uh, film the whole thing, mainly because my my um, upload seems to not like that. So uh, we'll come back to those maybe at a later date when I've got fiber optic broadband. But until that day, I'll just be doing the, the cut-ins at the end of the turn and maybe any exciting parts forth. So let's get started. This is the deployment at the first. The objective is the crossroads in the middle there. The village is occupied by some dastardly French légère and the hill just to the left of the village as we look at it has a battery of French artillery. We're using two gun batteries in this game. So let's see how the British do. So a KG turn one as the British make one move, advance up the road, which is not bad, it's not bad because this wood here save them from being fired at by that French artillery on the hill over there. So, some excellent tactical play there by Colonel Lyle. So, nicely done. The French moved up, if I can just get a higher view there. The French moved up to reinforce the village from behind there. That's going to be a tough nut to crack. We are treating the, the village as a single built-up area. Otherwise, the Brits are going to really, really struggle. So, that's how we've done that. Let's see if the Brits can start bringing their awesome musketry to bear in turn two. So, at the end of turn two, and the British have advanced along the road. Niall gave an absolutely superb order. Two moves, right turn. That's what we like to see. It's very Seven Years' War. That's how an army would deploy in Seven Years' War. They're still out of musketry range, but the cannons unlimbered. Being foot artillery, they can't fire this turn. What can fire this turn, however, is the French artillery. It's just over half range. You're one dice roll, a three. So, no hits on the valiant 33rd. And it's down, now down to the British turn three. I assume that Colonel Lyle's going to advance his brigade. And we're going to start uh, fisticuffing maybe next turn. Maybe not this turn. Let's see if he delivers them a volley first. But I'm also going to start rolling for my brigade by fighting devils. So I'm quite looking forward to rolling a double six and not getting them on the board, as, as usually happens. But let's see how that goes. I should say earlier on as well that the, uh, the river that is protecting the village... Uh, also has a ford that's on the other side of the Spanish church here. That may become important when the cavalry turn up. I'm whispering it so General Dan doesn't hear me. So there you go. That's the end of turn two. Let's see how the British attack begins in turn three. <laughs> 
So that's the end of uh, turn three, and the British advanced their firing line, and they poured lead into the village. The Spanish had a saying that the British only have two saints, Saint Powder and Saint Ball, and these ones absolutely flensed the Leger unit in the village, taking three casualties and a disorder, despite having a two plus save. The artillery fired into the 33rd of foot and missed. The British artillery thundered into the village and missed as well. So the artillery, not a great day to be an artilleryman, but to be a red coat with a musket is definitely a good day. I think these guys have got telescopic sights or something. As those French disordered and shaken as they are, are in a bit of trouble. Let's see if Niall can push the attack home as the uh, second brigade here, the fighting brigade, they, they're just going to cheerlead for this one. I don't think they're going to be required. It's going to be all over by tea and crumpets. It'll be uh, it'll be an easy victory for the British. <laughs> I don't think so. Let's see how it goes in British turn four. General Don, the absolute mad lad, orders his reserve battalion to storm across the bridge into the Green Howards. Now, we've only done the movement phase so far, we've not done the closing fire, we've not done the melee, but this is a man, clearly, he is channeling General Van Damme. You know my love of General Van Damme. Here he is again, and he's charging over the bridge. This is going to be a climactic battle. I cannot wait. For this combat phase, love it. It's uh, just a cut in. I, ju I just, I just so excited that I had to get it on camera. So the French stormed over the bridge, and I've just thought I probably should have filmed it live, shouldn't I? But I didn't. Sorry about that. So the uh, the French caused five hits on the British, but they were all saved but one, and that went through. The French had no casualties in return, so that's a drawn combat because the British support on either side. But the French are supported by the troops in the building, so it, it was two all, basically, and a draw. Neither of the units are at their stamina, so the battle continues next turn. The French reserves have turned up, so they're in the corner there. Only one move was rolled by General Dan. So they're coming up slowly. The artillery fired, disordering the 33rd of foot. So they're not going to be doing much next turn. The uh, fighting Irish, well, the fighting Scots, I guess they are, really, they advanced up the road one more turn. So let's see. The fight for the village continues in earnest. It's it's getting it's actually really close. This is one of the best games I think we've had on the channel so far. I'm really really enjoying this. Maybe it's because I'm not so involved. I get to watch it and enjoy rather than lose terribly. So let's see how it goes. The uh, the disordered marker comes off the French because that was the end of their turn. So let's get rid of that. There we go. Let's see how the British can do in their turn five. Uh, we're not going to start wrong for the cavalry yet. I was thinking about it. But uh, I think General Wellesley is going to keep them back for now. Let's see how it goes. British, turn five. So a savage turn there. Not much happened in the British, turn five. But the French zoomed up the road. Dan rolled a, a three for their command roll to get them right up to support the infantry here. Now, we rolled to see if these guys were supporting to the flank or the rear. I said, one, two, three, it's the rear. Four, five, six, it's the flank. I rolled a five, so I bet they were supporting to the flank. So that battalion that's moved up the road is allowed to support them to the rear. So they've got two supports now, the same as the Brits. The first round of combat, nothing much changed. Second round of combat, the British were shaken. They had to make a roll. They rolled a 10, which was a great roll from Nile there. So they carried on fighting, which is just as well, because my jocks had moved up and they were going to block those guys from retreating. So it's a good job that they did. I didn't quite manage to get them in line. Because I'm in column of march, that means I can't support. So next turn, they will definitely be moving into line to support the British from the rear. They're going to have maximum static res then. And I've talked before on the channel about the importance of static res. And we'll hopefully see it in the British turn. The artillery unluckily failed to do anything, but these Brits here took an extra hit from the recently rallied Leger in the building. The uh, French artillery on the hill, they rolled a double one. General Dan's dice coming in hot as he comes onto the table. So that's the situation here. I'm going to keep the cavalry off for another turn. Let's see if I'm going to need them. I don't think I am, but let's see. As the battle on the bridge continues, this is going to be an absolute bloodbath. So let's see how it goes on turn six. 
Well, ladies and gentlemen, there is a huge gap in the British line there, and that's because the French, that the building pressure finally took. The French caused three excess casualties on the British battalion that was here, the Green Howards, and they suffered one in return. So it was actually a drawn combat on five each. Sorry, they took two in return, the French. So it was a drawn combat on five each. And that meant that both sides had to take break tests. In a spectacularly unlucky series of dice rolls, Niall not only broke with the Green Howards, but he also broke with the guard who used to be there. And I broke, oh, sorry, no, I, uh, yes, no, I did break with the eighth, the Kingos, and the uh, Black Watch also fell back as well. So an absolutely disastrous turn for the British here. I think we might need some cavalry to perhaps shore up the line but are they going to be able to take the village on their own probably not although it is worth pointing out that some polish lancers took a village on their own so who knows it may be possible but that's the end of the british turn the french can now move and consolidate their gains in the village and maybe drive perfidious albion away from the uh, the crossroads let's see how it goes well after the collapse of the british line or the first british line i should say the french not wants to sit back have stormed across the bridge and onto the british in inverted commas side of the river now i should point out here i have not been advising dom at all this is his first game of black powder and even don realizes the best thing to do with french is attack always attack with them how many times have i hammered this home on the channel always attack so, i do need to follow my own advice dan you're absolutely right <laughs> but uh general don he's been promoted from colonel don he's now general of the brigade so that's a bonus uh, he's pushing through the British set. These guys, shaken, disordered, and part of a broken brigade, they're only going to be able to fall back this turn. However, the uh, General Picton is ceding command of this brigade here to uh, General, uh, uh, General Nile. So he's going to be commanding these jocks. Let's see if he can fight off this resurgent uh, French attack. And what's that I hear on the road? Sounds... Sounds like by hooves. Hmm. Let's see how it goes for the British in their next turn. So not a huge amount happened that turn. The 33rd were finally destroyed by a combination of French Leger and artillery fire. The battalion that was over the bridge got disordered. So the battalion behind them leapfrogged over, fired a shot at the Argyles and caused a casualty. The Argyles fired at the, uh, the battalion. They disordered them but caused no casualties. The cavalry rolled an 11, so they were really not fancying coming on the battlefield. But you can see now the battle has moved over the river. General Don, some phenomenal counter-attacking work. Again, really showing the importance of a well-timed counter-attack. I cannot emphasize that enough. He's like smiling there. He's like, this guy's blowing some serious smoke up my ass. But seriously, no, it was very, very well-timed. Much better time than I normally do. And, uh, I, you know, I'm not joking when I say that. It was very, very well. It, he saw the opportunity took it brilliantly. Niall, he had some very unfortunate dice rolling, but still, if uh, the attack had not been launched when it had, Niall wouldn't have been put in a position where his unfortunate dice rolling would have mattered so much. So, really good tactics. Niall, however, has formed line. The Scots are going to make a, uh, a solid British line, I would have thought. I would not want to be in that French column this turn, because it's probably going to be a bad day at the office for those guys. But let's see how it goes as we approach the next British turn. So both French columns stormed into the Highlanders, and the Highlanders put up a very good showing. Great defending rolling meant that they suffered only one casualty from the Black Watch, zero casualties from the Argyles. They actually won that combat, causing a casualty on the French. However, the, they passed their break test. The Highland, the uh, Black Watch rather, and the French, they drew their combat. So we're not going to end the game here. Of course we're not going to end the game here. We've got at least one more turn to come. Let's see if the British, if the Highlanders can salvage some British pride. I'm sure they can. Or if the French will be able to steamroll them and the advance into Spain will be slightly delayed, shall we say. Well, the Scots put up a brave fight, shaking both French battalions. But unfortunately, the Argyle and Southern Highlanders were broken. The Black Watch managed to stand their ground, as you would expect from the mighty Black Watch, but they are also shaken as well. I should probably get rid of that one there, because we don't need that anymore. They are shaken as well. So we are going to call it a day there. It should be pointed out, for those of you who missed 
the Scots Greys and the Inniskilling Dragoon Guards. I was rolling for them, but their rolls to come on the board were an 11, 11, and a 10. So that's why we've not seen those in the game. We didn't even bother rolling for the Dragoons. I would suggest that due to a timely counterattack, this is a crushing victory for the French. So very, very well played, guys. I, I really hope you enjoyed that. I know it was your first game of Black Powder. But um, thank you very much for playing. It was uh, I, I, I really enjoyed watching it. It was really, really good fun. I hope you guys enjoyed watching it too. And we will see you in the next video. So these are the Valiant Attackers, the British Army. We've got two brigades of infantry, each supported by a battery of artillery. And we've got a brigade of heavy cavalry. Let's start with the heavy cavalry. We've got in the front here a regiment of the Inniskilling Dragoon Guards. And behind them, we've got the Scots Greys. Now, you know my opinion on British cavalry. I think they are among, if not the best cavalry in the game. Let's see how they go on. They are led by this Dragoon officer here because the Earl of Uxbridge is commanding the Guards Brigade. He's got the Guards at the front there. They are a large battalion. He's got the 33rd behind. And he's got the uh, the Green Howards. I'm not sure what uh, number they are. They are the uh, 45th, by the look of it. Uh, and then behind them, we've got the Highland Division, the Picton's Fighting Third. We've got a brigade from them. We've got the King O's at the front, the fourth, the uh, fourth, eighth Kings. Behind them, we've got the Black Watch, the 48th. And behind them, we've got the Argyle and Southern Highlanders. So a strong British army. They're going to have to be strong because they are the aggressor. They are fighting the French for control of the battlefield. So let's see who they're up against.